You've probably noticed that when you see inflation data in the economic calendar or when you read the financial news, they'll often refer to headline inflation and core inflation. So what's the difference? Well, as you know, the way that inflation measures are usually explained is by referring to a basket of goods and services. Essentially, you're measuring the price change over time of that basket of items. And if the price of that basket of goods and services goes up, that's inflation. So headline inflation looks at the price of everything in that basket. So it's the whole basket of goods and services. Whereas core inflation looks at the price of the basket after removing items that have more volatile prices like energy and food. So it's the whole basket excluding certain items. Now policymakers like those guys at the central bank will usually focus more on headline inflation. James Bullard, a policymaker at the Federal Reserve, has previously mentioned that they prefer headline inflation because it includes everything a household is purchasing. People don't generally have the option to just exclude food or fuel from their expenses, although it would be pretty good if you could. But that doesn't mean that core inflation is useless. In fact, it can give us a much better picture of what's going on overall in the economy. So let's look at two broad scenarios so I can help you to understand this. In scenario one, headline inflation is significantly higher than core inflation. If this is the case, it could signal that prices are being driven by the volatile items like energy and food. Now, since their prices can fluctuate up and down a lot more often, inflation in those areas tends to fall more into the temporary category or that infamous term transitory. And this would be known as cost push inflation, where higher prices are being caused by something on the supply side. Now, monetary policy isn't really well suited for fixing supply problems. And so from a central bank's point of view, there's probably not much point in slowing the economy down too much if they can't actually address the core issue. It may also be the case that they can forecast prices will fall in the medium to long term, so they're willing to accept some above target inflation in the short term while they wait for that to happen. Now, this doesn't mean that they won't take action, but it just might come in the form of a slower pace of interest rate rises or something like that. However, if inflation runs too high for too long, the central bank will probably begin to take much bigger action, and that brings us on to scenario two. So in this scenario, headline inflation and core inflation are both running relatively high. This could signal that inflation is more broad throughout the whole economy and there's too much demand for goods and services relative to the, the lower supply. It could even come as a result of inflation from other areas spilling over into the broader economy, things like energy prices. So energy inflation can affect everything in the economy. It's not just about the energy that you buy as a consumer being more expensive, but also situations like retailers passing on their cost increases to consumers in the form of higher prices. So this can sort of broadly push up the prices of things throughout the whole economy. And therefore, as a result, workers are going to start demanding higher wages. And again, that's going to push up demand even more. And it could lead to a situation where we have a wage price spiral, which could cause inflation to continue to rise. So you can see how the different aspects are interconnected throughout the economy and how inflation in one area can cause a knock-on effect. So in this sort of situation, inflation would be considered to be much more persistent and the central bank would likely be tightening their policy to try and get it back under control. So that would typically mean raising interest rates and slowing economic growth. Now, we've only looked at two broad scenarios there and there could be many other factors to consider like the labor market and so on, but you can already begin to see how headline and core inflation can be used together to build a better picture of what's happening in the economy and to anticipate the sort of actions a central bank may take in the future. And if you want to understand more about inflation, including how it affects the markets for traders and investors, there are other videos on screen now. Hit the thumbs up button if you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.